Good evening, everyone. My name is Norville Barrington. I serve as the Vice President of Communications for the Metro New York Chapter National Black MBA. And on behalf of our National Chapter President of the Year, Andrew Hamilton, I want to welcome you to Beyond the Marathon, which is our partnership with the New York Roadrunners. Through our partnership, you're going to learn more um, in the upcoming days, months, and years to come regarding diversity inclusion, uh, supply diversity, business opportunities, partnerships, career opportunities. Uh, you're going to learn about the importance of mental and physical health, um, wellness opportunities, and also how to become fit both from a professional standpoint for those from a personal standpoint and make it more about your lifestyle. The marathon and beyond the marathon goes beyond uh, the New York City TCS uh, uh, marathon, which is the biggest marathon in the world. And what you're going to learn over the next couple of days, months, and years to come is how important this organization is in providing opportunities, for both mental uh, and physical health, and also business opportunities as well, as I mentioned before. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing from our special guest. I'm going to introduce our host. And um, you're going to learn more about Erica Evers O'Neill, who's no stranger to our organization. She currently serves as the Vice President of Culture, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion for New York Roadrunners. Uh, for more than a decade, she's providing training guidance and cultural competence, uh, educational pipeline initiatives, professional development, and a variety of diversity and inclusion related matters. Erica has a long standing commitment to diversity and public service, having had previous um, professional um, titles, such as the Senior Vice President of uh, the New York City Economic Development Corporation. She's also served as the Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion, Diversity, Director of Diversity and Inclusion, Director of Legislative uh, Advocacy um, Coalition, and she's also been a Community Development Liaison. Erica received her bachelor's in government from the College of William & Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia, and a Juris Doctor um, degree from the Toro Law School in Long Island, New York. Erica has been recognized by the Tri-State Diversity Council and the National Black Pre-Law Conference for her work. She currently resides in New York uh, with her husband and four daughters. Now, introducing and also welcoming and hosting our conversation today is the newest member of Diversity's, uh, Diversity um, MBA's magazine's top 100 under 50 emerging leaders for 2021. Um, the newly awarded um, recipient of this wonderful um, recognition, our Director of University and Alumni Relations, Alicia Suggs. And we want to thank both of you, and I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, we look forward to hearing your conversation. Thank you both. And Alicia, over to you. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Alicia Suggs, and I'm the Director of University and Alumni Relations. And I'm so excited to have Erica Edwards O'Neill Esquire here today to really talk about the New York Roadrunners culture overall. Um, Erica Edwards is the Senior Vice President of Culture, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for New York Roadrunners. Hi, Erica. Thank you so Hi. much. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be back. Um, and looking forward to the conversation and a long relationship with. Awesome. Okay, so Erica, New York Run Roadrunners, what is their mission? So New York Roadrunners' mission is to help and inspire people through running, um, and you know that has been a long-term mission uh, with now additional efforts in the. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion space, right? We are advancing our commitment to a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive, and socially responsive um, culture and environment um, for the organization. And uh, for those who run with the organization or participate in our programs and the like. Awesome. So during your tenure at New York Roadrunners, how have you been able to make improvements to further its mission? Well, I will say that, let me say that one, this is a, what I'd like to say, absolutely a collaborative effort. Um, and and what I will say again, as I've said over and over again, that diversity, equity, and inclusion work is disruptive. So it is collaborative and disruptive. Um, and there are, they, while I'm coming alongside and leading an initiative, there was a lot of good work that was started before I arrived. Um, uh, there, uh, a young woman, Jenna Panton, Panton was, was, 
um, launching DEI before I came in. So she's been a wonderful partner. And there were a lot of, like there was a lot of work done around, you know, task force and really exploring uh, what needed for, for cultural shift. And so one of the things that I'll say is that like really um, embracing that disruption, the difficult conversations um, and th that, that must happen for this work to really be sustainable. Um, we've been really intentional about not being performative or having one-offs in the moment that we have a conversation or a training or an expo exploration, not necessarily splashing it. We've really been spending, the, we spent the first six months or so really um, around the education and awareness phase. And I think that I've been a part of a team of people um, who are eager for change um, excited about change, passionate about this organization and its mission, and wanting better. Awesome, awesome. What is the DEI framework or focus? Um, so for, with New York Road Runners, we have an internal and an external framework. And internally, we really are ro rooted in four um, pillars right now, and that is focusing on advocacy, internal ac advocacy, ensuring that board and leaders and decision makers understand their role as champions, that they need to not just simply say that they support, but to go to steps a step further to be a champion for equity, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, the second pillar really focusing on uh, workplace diversity. The third focusing on inclusion and belonging, which is like a larger bucket focusing on almost everything that, that aff affects the employee life cycle for, from uh, not just recruiting, retention, hiring, performance review, um, promotions, but also who gets to behave badly, um, you know, because that's a thing, right? Who, you know, who's written up and who's dismissed that that's that that really is um, a, a common piece that we need to focus on for making different decisions. Mm -hmm. um, but it also talks about, you know, who are we doing business with? Who, how are we looking at our uh, sponsor relationships, our contracting, are we supporting um, MWDBEs, really uh, a broad scope, anything that affects the employee life cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and then last but not least, compliance. And for compliance, that means really for us looking at things like EEO, um, anti-discrimination, sexual harassment prevention, trainings, uh, complaint procedures and processes, ensuring that they are solid in place and that uh, that they're being communicated about with some regular cadence. Nice. Um, how is diversity and inclusivity promoted throughout the organization? I will tell you that, and I realize I didn't answer your second half of the question, external. So I'm talking about internal, but external, we also are focusing on establishing strategic partnerships and alliances um, to engage the public, uh, the community, but also really intentionally working with the external facing departments to um, for meaningful community engagement and to elevate um, diverse voices mm -hmm. in the community. So I just wanted to make sure I, I highlighted that. So internally and externally. Now, um, uh, sorry, how is diversity, equity, and inclusion being promoted throughout the promoted? organization? I think we've been, I've been really excited about, and again, I'm going to say that I'm, I'm going to pause here to insert something. Folks have asked me, you know, why this organization, why right now, um, with the with culture changes that were happening, one of the things that I saw when my from my from standing on the outside looking in from the interview is that it was there were passionate individuals who wanted better, who knew who had seen better, who were who really believed in the organization and the mission and wanted to be a part of change. And I wanted to come alongside that. Mm -hmm. And so again, you know that this is not a the, the approach was never we're going to hire this diversity person and this is her role. It was always about how it was going to op operate alongside and in collaboration. And so in many of those ways, it's been a close working relationship with our events team, with our marketing lead, with our sponsorship. And so what we've talked about is one of our key um, efforts for this year is to become a unified New York Roadrunners, and that also means deeply embedding DEI in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about our marketing, when we talk about our learning and development, but when we talk about um, conversations, um, our offerings to runners, how we can be more inclusive and in, 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 in providing a, a, um, an inclusive experience around. So some of those ways, uh, you know, look like moving to offering things like cash registrations at places where, where people are maybe underbanked. 
um, talking about internally creating, you know, we have a monthly diversity documentary series. We've had uh, conversations with um, Black Gotham um, around the Black footprint of New York City. We've had yeah. the management center so that we can talk deeply about foundational training, uh, making sure that we have strong people managers. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say this for those who don't know the management center, this is not a this is not a pay, pay promotion, but they are, they are folks that, that do management training with a DEI lens baked in. It's not an add on, it's not slathered on, but everything about people management um, is centered around non-for-profits and centered around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, we've had uh, conversations with the mayor's office of people with disabilities. So we, we, we're, we've been in the learning education and awareness phase and then looking through um, policies, practices, and procedures. What some of those I say, like they're written and also the ones that are written in invisible ink, right? The mm -hmm. formal and informal policies mm -hmm. um, to talk about where they may be less than um, expansive and inclusive, right? Really asking some key questions, who's benefiting, who might be burdened and who's left out of the conversation altogether. Yeah. So you mentioned, you know, earlier about, you know, employee feedback. Um, is there a process for employee feedback? And if so, how is feedback collected? Yes. Um, and so we are a couple of ways, right? Right. And we still have a, um, a monthly town hall um, where there are there's typically a presentation and agenda highlights and the updates around the organization. But during that town hall, um, employees have the opportunity to ask um, questions. Right. You can unmute, uh, raise your hand, ask a question. But there's also we also have an anonymous feature where you can all month su submit questions anonymously that we then answer live at the town hall. And then we, we publish those answers on the internet um, mm -hmm. for any staff member um, who was unable to attend because we're also in a place of like building, re continuing and building upon tr trust. So mm -hmm. we know that not everyone's going to be comfortable um, giving uh, direct live feedback. Um, but we absolutely want people to know that we want to hear from them. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, for our, our people and culture team have office hours that happen you know, twice a month. So it's like we're really trying to create an open door policy. The same thing with our CEO, our head of HR, our employee relations and most of our senior leadership team. The notion that please, please feel free to come and bring things up in that kind of, in that informal way. And we're working on what we're looking forward is like employee gate engagement surveys. We've had kind of pulse surveys, um, the survey monkey. We want to constantly right now looking at that space. And as we're also looking at uh, re reworking our, even our performance review and performance management system to give, to ensure that through, uh, uh, kind of open door policy through town halls, through the survey questions, through the office hours, but also through a true engagement survey where folks get to not just kind of fill out the box, but have a space to write in and give feedback. Um, and last but not least, you know, um, even in our uh, really um, revitalizing or uh, uh, changing a little bit up of our exit uh, surveys. So mm -hmm. if people are leaving, we want to hear um, we want to hear. We want to hear kind of like and, and looking to move also to state interviews. Right. Right. I know we talked about New York Roadrunner's mission. What are their company values? And I think that so there we, we actually had a, a wonderful series of task force um, and. And we have a variety of that. The task force developed something called the We Believe Statements. And so there there are a a lot of them. But mm -hmm. I would I would summarize from the We Believe statements that we are we are looking to embed in the organization. Um, a, a part of, of what I would summarize those is like three high level buckets. It really is becoming a unified New York Roadrunners, um, coming together as one team, integrating DIS in all that we do, and then maximizing our impact, leveraging uh, the expertise um, and how we drive meaningful impact across offerings. And so really, I think I would summarize it in that as well as like we're, we are exploring um, the We Believe statements. And the We Believe statements came from a series of listening sessions and um, cross-departmental working groups mm -hmm. that are, we're looking to move those We Believe statements. And I'll, and I'll say it's been a year of change. Um, and so yeah, that, that's about, that's really where we are right now. Looking forward to the next steps in these phases. And you said DIS, what does that stand for? 
diversity for at New York Road Runners and and actually I tend to probably take this title with me um, yeah. officially diversity equity inclusion and I think social responsibility is is key in that wow. okay. and under social responsibility there probably there sub functions um, or sub pillars and and I believe social responsibility would in, should include volunteerism and philanthropy it should include uh, something that I call it's this is probably not the appropriate title but um, but fiscal and business integrity, who are we doing business with, um, how and why, um, environmental sustainability. We have a lot of work happening in our environmental sustainability piece as well. And, and certainly under equity, I, I include equity also under um, sustainability or a social responsibility, excuse me. So I know COVID really, you know, threw a lot of organizations off and I know New York Roadrunners is responsible for the New York City Marathon. So how has COVID-19 changed the culture and the recruitment process during this time? I think like many organizations, this is about, we're you know, talking about not just being able to pivot to re remote work, but um, working to create, um, ensure engagement through remote work, ensure connectivity through remote um, work. Um, and I think that how it has changed is it, it is really figuring out how to have touch points and connectivity virtually. And I, I think that's that's probably been the highlight in that. And, and I know that we're not unique in that, but it, you know, you see really how people's wheels, you know, turn where people create the virtual happy hours and the virtual, you know, the, the perks around the virtual dance parties and the touch bases and the coffee chats and the virtual cooking classes outside of meetings and strategy sessions and trying to figure out how to create creatively whiteboard, you know, via, via uh, text, uh, or, you know, over um, teams or so forth. But I think that really is, it is the uh, greater use of technology and the intention, I think intentionality, right? You need to be very intentional because one of the things that I talked about starting, I started with the organization in very late December. Um, and so I, I haven't had that chance to do the like bump into you in the hallway. So the intentionality around folks that have started in the organization is I need to be intentional about reaching out and making time and, and being and acknowledging now who haven't I connected with, right? I don't, I'm not going to bump into them in the, the kitchen just yet as we are still on a voluntary return phase. Um, and so what I have seen across departments and across levels is a lot of intentionality around um, the reaching out and taking stock of who you're having, who you're in communication with, um, and not just waiting for the folks to raise their hands, but to, um, you know, go to the folks who are like, no, please, you too, my door is open to you too. So I, I've seen that across the recruiting, not just recruiting, but I think entire um, organization. Awesome. Um, so I know we talked about employee feedback. To what extent are people held accountable for their results and are accomplishments recognized as well? I think so. And I think, again, we're thinking that this has been a year where we've been revising a lot with titles, restructuring. Um, and so in some of those ways, we're really talking about, I think maybe we're talking about performance management and performance reviews and how we're baking in um, uh, leadership, how we're looking at the core competencies, how we're considering um, uh, what it takes to be promoted and also uh, career pathing. So what we're what we're moving to is really to ensure that key competencies have been defined for each and all the roles. And those competencies include equity and inclusion, diversity, equity and inclusion. And so we're moving through our first phase of um, accountability in that space. And so that's just, I think, in the written piece, uh, piece but also one of the reasons for resetting and making sure that we were all speaking the same language, normalizing the language of equity was that in how we manage and how we operate in our one-on-ones and the team check-ins, that also was a space for accountability, that this is not, um, this is not a once a year conversation that people are regularly communicating about where they are, where they see themselves, their path going forward, how they deliver, really moving to, um, every check-in is an opportunity to discuss for feedback and for accountability. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, and I know you just mentioned about employees thinking about what their path is at New York Roadrunners. Um, is there a 
growth and career development program that's at New York Roadrunners or in development? In development, absolutely. So one of the things that, that since um, I started in December, we also hired a director of employer relations and engagement um, who is uh, overseeing, build, helping to build out our learning and development track, our uh, curriculum, but also looking at our succession plans and career pathways. We want people to see, excuse me, <clears throat> that they have the opportunity to go up and across. And we really want to encourage that um, and so it's absolutely, it's in development and part of the work that went before with our like re-leveling, retitling, um, we've gone through announcing through what, like these are the, these are the new competencies. This is how they're going to be applied. And the next phase we're going through trainings around how each team and department can discuss career pathing. <laughs> I know we've talked about when we've had other discussions about a scorecard. Um, are there metrics developed to track the success of the corporate culture changes? Yes, and in some ways, those metrics connect to things like um, well, the first uh, the first document that we're working on is um, a bit of a DNI workforce metrics report, so that we know exactly you know who's here, who, um, and then we begin to year over year. We want to look at how we're trending, and like what's it, overall, what are the what the, what are the DEI metrics in hiring, and also retention, who's coming, who's leaving, what's the applicant pool look like, are there specific departments, so that we can then, then start to talk about. Um, what we're trying to solve for. Often we go to like slapping on DEI initiatives and efforts without like a, hey, what's what's really happening here? Is it a shallow pool um, or is it a really rich, diverse pool, but people are not making it through the door? That's Those are separate conversations and then understanding what we need to do there. So that's just from the hiring piece. Also want to be able to look at um, working with closely with uh, HR and the employee relations around how we're monitoring employee uh, en engagement and promotions, right? Who's being promoted? What are the, what, what does that look like? And the other piece where I think we're measure we want to measure is what we, what we will see from our engagement survey year after year, what we will see from um, a really a temperature check. We want to be able to regularly take a pulse um, uh, check and then look at our, look at our retention numbers, look at our recruitment numbers, look at our promotion numbers, and then look at the, the feedback that will come from, uh, the new performance management and review system. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here this evening. Um, it's always a pleasure talking to you. And um, I'm really excited to see, you know, New York Roadrunners, what, what's next for them. Um, but thank you again. Thank you really again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, look, look for it. Uh, and just again, I think I, I know that <clears throat> we're wrapping up. One of the things that I want to I want to say is that we're absolutely looking at this from a holistic piece, right? Not simply just um, hiring and recruiting and pipelining is, is is important, but we're trying to look at this from several different lenses. And but reminding folks that it is this is truly a long distance run. This is this is a bit of a, a journey. And so again, yeah. I think <laughs> I think it is a marathon, right? But I'm pumped. Thank you so much for. Um, I'm going to thank you all for your partnership with us um, and the conversations that we've had thus far, and um, you know, really looking forward to continue. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. It's been 50 years in New York City. 50 years of races, 50 years of legends. The emotion of Shalane Flanagan as she comes to the line. 50 years of heart. I run for my country, I run for my daughter, and now I'm running for New York. 50 years of opportunities. I think being able to, to line up again with them, that's just really meaningful to me. Team USA members right there and getting to all be in it together is really special. 50 years of dominance. It's hard to pick a memory here, but I can't wait to raise my sixth title at the 2021 TCS New York City Marathon. 50 years of resiliency. I ran the virtual marathon here last year, but nothing beats running New York. It's been 50 years, but never has it been like this. Together, they will come to New York to make the greatest field of American women's distance runners. In this 50th year, it'll be just what we need.
again, thank you everyone for attending this evening's great discussion with Erica. Um, Erica, you dropped so many gems. I'm so excited for the path that New York Roadrun is just taking. And thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Really um, absolute pleasure. Um, thrilled to have been invited. And I say again, this is um, this is not a one and done. We are looking for a long uh, relationship, continued conversation, learning and growing together. Um, happy to be back anytime. Thank you. And on behalf of the National Black MBA Association, my name is Alicia Suggs, and I am the Director of University and Alumni Relations. Have a great evening, everyone. Thanks. Good night. The streets of New York are buzzing with anticipation this morning. A city, 8 million strong, ready once again to prove its resilience. A street as iconic as the city itself. A race marking its 40th running. It's a runner's paradise here on Fifth Avenue. And they all have one mile to prove themselves. Welcome to the 2021 New Balance Fifth Avenue Mile. We have all the highlights, sounds, and results from the day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 New Balance Fifth Avenue Mile. A historic day here on this iconic stretch of New York City as thousands of runners race from the Met to Grand Army Plaza in the event's 40th running. 40 years of world-class athletes towing the line along with runners of all ages and abilities with that one goal in mind. Sprint as hard and as fast as you can to that finish line. Fifth Avenue isn't the only race hitting a major milestone this year. If Labor Day is the unofficial end of summer, then the New Balance Fifth Avenue Mile is the unofficial kickoff of the fall running season here in New York as we look forward to the 50th running of the New York City Marathon. Today, we're going to be chatting with some runners who are taking a break from their training for an all-out sprint before lining up for the 2021 TCS New York City Marathon. I am headed to my start for this year's New Balance Fifth Avenue Mile. The last time I ran this race was the last time everyone ran this race. 2019, I'm so happy to be back here. Everyone's happy to be back here. The spectators are excited. The runners are excited. We're right near the finish, and these runners are at an all-out sprint. Don't let anyone fool you into thinking, oh, it's just a mile. If you run it right, it can hurt, and it feels so good. The 2021 New Balance Fifth Avenue Mile done. I don't know why I get more nervous for a mile than I do for a marathon, but I think anyone who's here today will tell you that a mile can hurt just as much as a marathon. That second quarter, that little uphill is no joke third quarter, a little bit downhill. That's the sweet spot. Super fun. The crowds were so loud. There was music. People were dancing. The energy is so good, so palpable. You can just feel that people are so happy to be here, me included. This is just the beginning of an amazing day. And 607, of course, PR, not bad. I'll take it. Before the pros laced up, runners ages 2 to 87 warmed up the streets in 18 separate heats and the youth dashes throughout the day. I haven't done any race in two years and I, I love racing, so this was, this was so much fun. Let's go! A fan favorite heat is always the NYPD FDNY Mile, where New York's bravest square off with New York's finest. 
in a race for glory, bragging rights, and a really big trophy. This year, 47 officers and firefighters crossed the line. This year's race was significant. Race day fell just one day after the 20th anniversary of the attacks on 9-11, an event that many of those brave first responders, including FDNY Battalion Chief David Drake, ran into 20 years ago. This weekend, I believe, is an important uh, weekend because after 20 years, it's, it's a very big chapter that I like to say it's kind of behind us. Um, a lot of tears have been shed. And now I feel it's a good time to celebrate and remember those who went before us, the lessons that they taught us, and teach it to our children and the next generation. My race went phenomenal. Um, I, had a, I had a number of mine, and I definitely hit that number plus a little more. So I was excited to uh, get the time that I got. The time was 5.30ish. I was hoping to break six. I felt I crushed it. So I'm, I'm very excited to say I run a five minute mile, 5.30 but uh, I still got it in me and I was very excited to have that today. The New Balance Fifth Avenue Mile truly has a race for everyone. We kicked off the day with the wheelchair and hand cycle heat before diving into the open divisions where runners of all ages took to the street all morning long. Among today's finishers were stars of ABC's The Bachelorette, Tasha Adams and Zach Clark. Quite honestly, I was bamboozled into the race this morning. I had no idea I was doing this. So I thought, not why not morning. do it Come together? On. You're right, last night. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're both running for charity. She's running for World Vision, which is, you want to talk, I mean, like, kids. Yeah, a huge children's organization. So um, that speaks to my heart. And then he's running for release. Release Recovery Foundation, so addiction recovery, mental illness. So we're maybe next year we'll focus on the time a little bit more, but this yeah. year we're just going to work on the finish. Bigger than us. <laughs> Last but not least, to cross today's finish line were the world class runners in the men's and women's pro fields. Among the stacked fields were 15 Olympians, including Jake Whiteman and Gemma Riki, who led a British sweep of today's pro races. Whiteman raced to the finish in three minutes, 49.5 seconds, the seventh fastest time in history to become the fifth athlete on the men's side to claim multiple victories at the event after having won in 2018. Ollie Hoar of Australia was the runner up in the men's race in three minutes, 50.3 seconds, followed by Great Britain's Jake Hayward in three minutes, 50.4 seconds. In her New Balance Fifth Avenue debut, Riki led the professional women's field presented by MasterCard, breaking the tape with a time of 4 minutes, 21.6 seconds, becoming the first woman other than Jenny Simpson to win the race since 2012. Americans Nikki Hiltz and Shannon Osika rounded out the podium in 4 minutes, 23 seconds, and 4 minutes, 23.5 seconds, respectively. I was so happy to finish with her win and yeah, it's been, a, it's been a great season, but it's also been a frustrating season for me. So to finish the season on like a win was really good. It's been so good to run in New York. I've always wanted to run in it and Jenny's won it like eighth time in a row. And like, she's such a great athlete, athlete to like follow. And yeah, it's been amazing to be here. It's always a special place to do it. I think that's my fourth run here and second win. So. I think once you learn how to win it, if you've done it once before, it's kind of been an advantage. I think every single person that runs it will tell you that the finish line always looks closer than it is. Um, 
So as soon as you think it's time to go and time to kick, wait a little bit longer because uh, it's always a bit further than you think. So I did that today and you always panic a little bit that you're not going to last and uh, you're going to die a little bit. But I think I judged it right. So yeah, pleased with it. The next time pro runners will hit the streets of New York will be Marathon Weekend. And joining me now is the man behind the curtains of today's amazing event and all New York Roadrunners events, Senior Vice President and Race Director, Ted Metellus. Well, you know what? We've had an incredible day, Ali. We're here, the city's alive. It's a beautiful end of summer, almost fall day. Uh, and New York is out, you know, running this 40th anniversary of this event. This is one of the oldest mile races in the world. It's one of those events that people mark in their calendar as a benchmark, you know, whether you're training for the marathon or any other larger distance, the New Balance Fifth Avenue Mile is that event. And what's great is it's a distance for all and it's a distance that you can build yourself up to over time. It's great to be back after, you know, we haven't been out here since 2019 and here we are, we are back. The energy's here, a beautiful day in the city. New Balance Fifth Avenue Mile, you couldn't ask for a better day. On behalf of everyone at New Balance and New York Roadrunners, thank you for following along and congratulations to everyone who took part in today's race. Thank you so much for joining me today at the 2021 New Balance Fifth Avenue Mile. I'm Allie Feller. I'm the host of the Allie on the Run Show podcast, and you can follow me at Allie on the Run One. Just like most things in life, it's one mile at a time. And let this be the first step that you take towards that goal.